Hello, Saints. Dr. Francis Miles again here, coming live from my studio. Listen, get everybody you know on this one. Everybody, I mean everybody you know. You know people, Dr. Miles does not bring anything that I know will not change your life uh, so suddenly. But I tell you, today is going to be one of those days where you are going to say, I'm so glad I was tuned in when Dr. Miles went live. On Monday, the 23rd of May, you remember this date. Why? Because this is a moment of kairos for you and your family. Who would have thought that America would be talking about a baby a shortage or baby formula? Mm. And now they are talking about a global uh, food shortage. You can live in panic or you can prosper in the pandemonium. Uh. And today, I have a dear, dear friend of mine an apostle with a word from God that is going to change your life. I kid you not. So I want to give you an opportunity while we go through the next announcement. Get your friends. I mean, you are, or those who are on Facebook, do what you always do. When I'm, when I'm, share, share. I want a thousand shares right now. I'm asking for a thousand shares right now. Help me out. Get that because you will be so blessed. This word is going to change your life. It's a prophetic word for how believers are going to survive and prosper in the pandemonium we are living in right now globally. I don't care where you are tuning in, Australia, Europe, Africa, Africa, America, this is the word of the Lord. So share, share. My YouTube followers, you guys are always amazing. You amaze me how much, in, how engaged you are when we go live. You know, let's blow it up today. Let's blow the phones up. I mean, you know how to share on YouTube, your YouTube thing. Show the live feed on Facebook. It's so easy to share. Share, 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 share. And then I'm going to come back after this announcement and I'm going to introduce our guest speaker, this mighty apostle of God. And you better hear the word God gave him, you know, for how believers can survive these days of the pandemonium in Jesus name. I'll be right back after this announcement. The heavens declare the glory of God. The expanse shows his handiwork. In them he has set a tent for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his room, like a strong man rejoicing to run his course. So I can understand that when Mary is in that crowd, Padova is crying for them to choose Jesus over Barabbas. But she doesn't understand the mystery of redemption. That Jesus did not come to the world to die a normal death because a normal death does not do anything for you and I. I declare release honor in this house, release the altar of Melchizedek and bring honor to your name, honor to your altar like never before. When the King of Glory comes in, you cannot help but sing about His goodness. He is our joy. He is our healing. He is our deliverance. Hallelujah! He's even the shout in my mouth today. Faith with glory, it's, it's already done. It is finished. You, actually, or you already actually did it, but in the future. And you walk to the future and you realize, oh, I already did it. You walk into it is finished. Jesus said, for the joy set before me, he endured the cross. No matter what's happened, my God is faithful. No matter what I feel, my God is going to come through. No matter what they say, my God is going to show up. Don't live in mediocrity any longer. Don't be average. Let God's promises shine on your ways and direct your path towards the life of victory he has in store for you. This is what the Lord was saying. He said, when, you, when you're in, living in the fire of my presence, that fiery darts can't touch you. When you begin to get the keys back to your giftings and your talents, and you say, I'm about to take the keys back to my life. Everything that Jesus did when he came to this earth, and now he's ascended back to the Father, and he says, I've given you all authority, I've given you dominion, now begin to act like it. The 
heavens declare. Wow, wow. Listen, I'm telling you, you want to be with us at three days of glory. Listen, we are moving from the unknown into the glory. Because the, see, the, the kind of devils that are coming on the world scene today, the anointing is not good enough anymore. We need the glory. And this is why we are going to be at Abandoned Life Church in Locust Grove for three days of glory. I'm telling you, July 21st to the 23rd, with mighty voices. The speaker you're about here today is the apostle of the ministry where the big conference will be held with Eddie James, myself, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm powerful people there. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, it's going to be a time of the God encounter. So go to events.francismouse.com. Events.francismouse.com. I mean, literally, it, they are, it, you need to register. But the event is free. But if you're looking for a guaranteed seat, it's only $9.99. Just for a, a VIP guaranteed, guaranteed seat. But general admission is free. But if you really want to guarantee your seat, because there will be a lot of people. I've been looking at the numbers. They are coming from all over America and the world. So you join us for three days of the glory. And if you cannot be with that, live stream the event. It's going to be phenomenal. Now, check this out. I have today in the studio a great man of God, a dear friend. An apostle in the body of Christ with the word from the Lord. And man, he, he's like Sid Roth. He lives in miracles. Miracles yeah. are normal. His church, you know, they're not surprised by the miracles. They're surprised when they don't happen. <laughs> you know, I know some of us go to churches when the miracle happens. You'll be talking about it for years. But they, he, he runs a church where miracles don't, if a, miracle, if a miracles don't happen on any Sunday or any service, something is wrong. Okay, and that's the kind of church he runs. And today is in the studio. But he wrote a book that today is going to be the focus of the entire broadcast. And I'm telling you, guys, you know me. You follow Dr. Mouse. I'm telling you, uh, I don't bring anybody here that unless I really believe they have a word and they have something in God that you desperately need. I have never been more excited about a guest I've had on this table than I do today. This book, Prospering in Pandemonium, is going, to be, is going to be available through the live broadcast. Even after, even, even after the live broadcast, we want to make sure as many of you today get this book, Prospering in Pandemonium, and we are going to tell you how you get it. So on the show today is a dear friend, Apostle <laughs> Jeremiah Horsford. Apostle Jeremiah Horsford is the lead pastor of Abandoned Life Revival Network, which includes churches in Locust Grove, Georgia, Fosfai, and Tulamo, Ireland, in Europe, as well as the Legacy School of Ministry, is a passionate and highly sought of the preacher and leader, whom God is using powerfully to take revival to the nations. He is the author of 21 Days to Overflow, which is actually in the studio with us, and we're going to tell you how you can get these two books as a combo. I'm telling you, you will not believe the combo uh, we have for you uh, for the two books. But he wrote the book, 21 Days to, 21 Days to an Overflow. And, a, and he's also a contributing author of Igniting Revival Fire Every Day. He has the honor of leading and ministering to, with his wife, Lisa, and their son, uh, Jeshua. So we are very excited to have you in the studio, Man of God Apostle. Uh, Jeremiah, welcome Thank you, Dr. to Miles. this powerful, Thank special you. broadcast. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for having me today. And I'm telling you, this is going to be a moment where many of the people that are watching today, their yes. lives are going to change Come on. before this day is over. I mean, uh, I, feel, I, mean I feel the glory as yeah, you're speaking. So, something good is going to happen My God. to every person that watches this video today. There's going to be an impartation yes. that's going to happen in their lives, and it's going to change some things around for them today as they watch this broadcast man of god you know uh uh as we i mean uh, as i get ready to to take you because i'm just gonna let you speak yes i'm just gonna go let you go through it we can just go through we're gonna just, just do a i just want to do a synopsis of the book we'll go from chapter to chapter love it because man of god what blows my mind is how prophetic and how how prophetic this book is yes how untimely on. this book is yes because when god gave you began to give you this revelation that was before the covid pandemonium yes so it's not like god was reacting to the covid no 
I mean, God was anticipating, was going beyond the COVID. Yes. And this book contains a roadmap for how, how, I mean, you got miracles, how your people were surviving through COVID. Yes. And then, but your book goes beyond COVID. Yes. To the pandemonium of the last days and how would we prosper in the last days. Yes. God has given us a word. And, and this is, let me tell you something, just a little bit before we get into this book right here. I want to just share with you. May of 2019, the Lord gave me a dream. And at the end of the dream, I heard a loud voice repeating over and over, Zechariah 9, Zechariah 9, Zechariah 9. And I woke up and began to uh, read the Bible of what, what did Zechariah 9 say? And oh, just a long story short, uh, I realized that God was saying two things. One was divine protection. But the other was divine provision, because in Zechariah 9, it is, it is the promise of the double portion. And the Lord released this over me, and he began to speak to me about the promise of the double portion. Now, this was before there was a COVID breakout. This was before anything. So I began to preach about the double portion anointing and how it is releasing upon the church. And then in 20, uh, uh, December 31st, 2019, coming into 2020, what happened? I stood on a platform in our church and I began to release prophetic utterances. Little did I know three months later, the whole world would shut down because of a pandemic. And God had already spoken to me. God had already told me and given me a prophetic word for his people. And he said, get this out to my people because my people need to know how to prosper in the midst of pandemonium. They need to know that I am the same God yesterday, today, and forever, regardless of what you're facing. God has a word. He is not reacting to what is happening in the world. He is not reacting to what the devil is doing. God has been proactive. He has released a prophetic word right now for you to prosper in the midst of pandemonium. So as we go through this book today, I'm telling you right now, you're not only going to get information, you're not only going to get an impartation, but you're going to feel faith come in you like you've never felt before. And you're not going to give in to what you're seeing. You're going to begin to obey what you're hearing from heaven. Wow. Wow. Listen, saints, I, I'm going to start going through this book. I can't wait. But uh, I, I'm looking at your comments here, guys. I love your comments. Guys, let me know you are in the house by yes. your comments. I am monitoring all the comments while the, the man of God is levelating and giving us the prophetic message God gave us to survive these days of food shortages, uh, 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 pandem pandemoniums. Please, please remember, I do not think by any sort of the imagination based upon scripture that COVID-19 is the last pandemic. Come on. So how do we, if there's another one coming. Now they're talking about the monkey, the monkey thing. Oh my God, the devil is a liar. You know? yes. The monkey spot, whatever it is. They're talking about this next pandemonium. My point is, God never leaves the righteous as victims of circumstance. Come on. There is always a prophet in a generation who's raised with a roadmap from heaven to navigate the body of Christ through times of darkness and great tribulation. I believe my friend, Apostle Jeremiah Osford, is the prophet of the hour with a message from God. I write books. I mean, I wish I wrote this one, but I did it. He did it. God gave it to him, but you can get it today and be prepared for what is coming ahead. What's happening now, what's coming ahead. You can never uh, let yourself be caught. Uh, be caught unaware like what happened with COVID where you are just being thrown around it's time to prepare so I want you in the comment section let me know how you are feeling as the man of God is levelating and listening to the word amen and at the end of the broadcast Apostle Jeremiah Hosford is going to release miracles. He's mm -hmm. going to pray for you. Like I told you, he's a man of miracles. Every service, and I'm not, I'm not, every service they have, God is moving. God is doing a miracle. That is actually the New Testament, but so many churches have walked away from the, from, from just, from the miraculous, from the demonstrating the miracles of Jesus. His church is completely different. If you're ever in town or you live in Atlanta, what are you waiting for? Drive to Locust Grove and go and check out. And you come back saying, Dr. Mouse, half of what you said on the broadcast <laughs> was not even told me. 
I found more than you, what you told me on the broadcast. Yes. But I want you to be commenting. Share, share, share. Let's allow many people to be part of this broadcast because it's going to be so powerful. My guys on, uh, on, on, on uh, YouTube, you know, uh, I, YouTube, you know, let's keep talking. I mean, on Facebook, I see Cheryl is in the house. Andrew is in the house watching from Malawi. I'm watching Matthew. I'm watching from Zambia, South Africa, Australia, Georgia. Oh, my God. Watching from Atlanta. I mean, they're watching from Papua New Guinea. I mean, many people, I mean, people are just jumping in. Jumping in. Come on, let's have an amazing, fro I mean, it's going to be an amazing time of the God encounter. Amen. Praise the Lord. My YouTube followers, you know how much I love you. I'm following up for, with you guys. You know, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Zoe said, I'm watching from London. Come on, somebody. Amen. Um, we, uh, Kevin, Kevin, read. I'm watching from Cape Town, South Africa. God is good. Amen. Hallelujah. California, Namibia. Look at that. God is just speaking by the Spirit of God. Thank you again for joining us for this amazing broadcast. And we, as we talk about prospering in pandemonium. So now, uh, Apostle Jeremiah, I'm going to now go through this book. Because yes. I'm just, I'm so excited. By the way, uh, you'll be going to see lower thirds appear on the screen, leading you to the website where you can buy this book today. The first 100 people, the first 100 people, and you want to be one of those 100, you want to be in that number, who go to that website, you know, and order the book, Prospering in Pandemonium, you are going to get an autographed copy of the apostle. Mm -hmm. An autographed copy will come to you, you know, and actually, if you get a combo of, uh, we, uh, if you get this book, you can get 21 days, 21 days to overflow for only $10. Yes. So, I mean, literally, this book goes for, I think, for $20. You're getting for half of the price if you get them together or you can just get one of them. But if you don't, if you have to choose between the two, this is what yes. we are talking about. But boy, an extra $10, get them both. <laughs> okay, you go to Jeremiah Horsford. JeremiahHorsford.com. JeremiahHorsford.com. You know, and then you can get these books. So, Apostle. In the first chapter of this book, and thank you again for giving me the opportunity to write the foreword. Yes, yes. Uh, thank you for writing the foreword. Thank you, <laughs> Dr. Miles. You know, it says, uh, the first chapter is the prophetic versus pandemonium. Yes. Please talk to us. Why that title and why is that the one you come out of the gate? Well, you know, guys, the, every time in history, if you will look throughout the Bible, Pandemonium is not a new thing. Pandemics are not a new thing. Things that come on the earth uh, are not a new thing. Uh, sickness, uh, poverty, things like this, shortages, they are not new. They've always come on the earth. But this is what I found throughout the Bible, and this is what God revealed to me. Every time that there was a pandemonium, every time there was going to be uh, shortages, every time that there was going to be a pandemic, if you will, then God would always release a prophetic word to combat or to destroy that which was being released on the earth for his people. And I think about the time of Judah's deliverance. I write about it in the first chapter. Judah's deliverance. Here, the people of Judah have this great army coming against them, and they don't know what to do. Uh, Judah is outnumbered probably one to a hundred. And the Bible says that, that they go and they begin to fast and pray, and God moves upon a man by the name of Jehaziel. And Jehaziel gets a prophetic word, and he begins to release that prophetic word to the people. And basically, this is what he says. He says, do not fear you, people of Judah. This battle is not yours, but it is the Lord's. And the, the people believe that word. This is also where you read in 2 Chronicles 20 and verse 20, and this is what the Bible says. Believe on the Lord, and you shall be established. Believe on his prophets and you shall prosper. In other words, God releases a prophetic word through his prophets 
through his people to cause you to prosper in the face, in the middle of pandemonium. And we know the end of the story. God sent, sends an ambush on the, on the enemies of the people of the Lord and they, they begin to turn on themselves. And the Bible says the people of the Lord get all the spoil. You see, in a time of pandemonium, God always releases a prophetic word. He is, this, is what, this is what this book is, Prospering in Pandemonium. It is a prophetic word that is being released before the enemy's ever doing anything. And so the thing that we have to get down in our hearts and settle in our minds is this. Are we going to believe what we see or are we going to believe what he says? Because many times what God says is not, does not seem to be lining up with what we see with our natural eyes. And right now, God is releasing a prophetic word. And he's saying, I'm going to cause my people to prosper in the midst of everything you see. But yes, don't you understand, Apostle? The gas prices are going up. Don't you understand? There's food shortages. Don't you understand? There's a war going on in Europe right now. Don't you understand? I understand all of it, and I know it to be so. But it does not negate that God has released a prophetic word and if you grab a hold of that prophetic word in the midst of pandemonium you shall prosper wow so that's why I started out the gate with that Th that is amazing so in other words what you are saying the prophetic is never a victim of circumstance that's right that the prophetic is God's foreknowledge he knows yes. the end from the beginning yes never caught in between amen alpha and omega <laughs> come on now the prophetic changes the circumstance it changes the circumstance yes it'll change it every single time wow <laughs> i hope you are hearing that sense listen wow wow now apostle this um uh then you say uh, chapter two is revelation revealed and released talk yes. to us about what chapter two is all about revelation revealed and released yes because i really want you guys to get this book Prospering in Pandemonium, releasing the double portion. Yes. JeremiahHorsford.com. JeremiahHorsford.com. Get the autographed book right now. Be among the first 100. So tell us, Revelation re revealed and released, why that chapter? Well, that chapter is basically saying, uh, uh, how many of you have ever been in a place where, where someone's preaching, someone's speaking? Everyone is hearing the same thing but not everyone is receiving the same thing. Why is this? Because uh, having knowledge of, of something is not what, what, what catapults you into it. Jesus. Having a revelation of it is what takes you into it. And so the, I could have heard the Lord say, Zechariah 9, Zechariah 9, Zechariah 9, but until I got the revelation of what he was saying, that's what caused the faith in me to explode, to say it does not matter what I see. It does not matter what's coming against me. The revelation, think about this. What caused Peter, what caused Peter to say, you are the Christ, you're the anointed mm. one, the son of the living God. What was it? It was a revelation of who Jesus was. This revelation carried Peter through the darkest moments of his life. Even when he denied Christ, there was something inside of him saying, I cannot get away from this revelation. Even though I've messed up, I cannot get away from this revelation. So today, I, I wrote that chapter as chapter two because I wanted to impart inside of the reader, you guys, I wanted to put something deep inside of you that it, this is not, listen, there are many great, great books written by great authors of good Holy Ghost filled people. And, and you need to get them because they help you. But there is a difference between reading a good book and a God book. There is a difference between having knowledge of something and having revelation of something. There is a difference between reading information and getting an impartation. And this book is an impartation. And when you get an impartation from a revelation, nobody, no circumstance, no devil, no demon, no situation can change what God has placed inside of you. That's the reason, Dr. Miles. Wow. That I wrote that chapter. I'm, I'm just loving it. Sense, listen, 
Come on, share this video. I mean, this live feed, it's amazing while we are still. Because remember, at the end of the broadcast, the apostle is going to pray a prayer for you to prosper in the pandemonium, that are in this pandemonium and those that are coming. I'm telling you, you do not want to miss this prophetic message. Okay? So listen, uh, uh, in this book, chapter 3, it's called Here Verses There. And there's a scripture that I just, that I just love. I've never seen this before. Okay. It's Zechariah 9, verse 8. It yeah. says, but I will come around my house against marauding forces. Yeah. I mean, I love that picture already. <laughs> can you imagine God coming outside your house? Oh, come you on. can go to sleep Amen. no matter what's going on. Amen. And it says, no oppressor will overrun them, will overrun them again. Yes. For I now watch with my own eyes. With my own eyes. Man of God, you write this chapter here, verses there, yes. talk to us in prospering in pandemonium. Yes. Well, when I began to write this chapter, I want you to understand that I had received a word from God. And the word from God was, I am going to protect you. He used that verse that Dr. Miles just read to impart that inside of me. This was the, this was the battle that I was having. Mm. For years, though, it seemed like I would always get right up to the breakthrough and then be pulled back. I feel like many of you watching right now, Come you on. know what I'm talking about. Mm. You've, you take five steps forward only to be pulled back six steps. And God turned around and spoke to me and he said, I am going to camp around your house and I am going to watch with my own eye because it's not going to happen again. This was the problem I was facing inside of me. The challenge was, God, I hear what you're saying, but look at where I'm at. It was my here versus my there. You see, many times the problem we have is when God speaks to us, he speaks to us in our here, but he speaks to us about our there. So there's a challenge right here because what you're seeing is your here. What you're seeing right now is the lack or what you're seeing right now is the sickness or what you're seeing right now is you don't see the breakthrough, but God is speaking to you about the breakthrough. So how do you get or how do you how do you continue to walk in faith when you're in your here, but God is speaking to mm. you about you're there? <laughs> this was the challenge that Abraham and Sarah had because he talks to Abraham and he says, you're going to be a father of many nations. But his here said, you got an old wife and she's never been able to have a child. Abraham grabs the word and says, that is a word that you're speaking for my there. And this is what the Bible says. The Bible says that he spoke those things that are not as though they were. In other words, in his here, he refused to bow to the here circumstances. He refused to bow to the here challenges. And he took his there word and applied it to his here. And guess what happened? He received his there. And I just feel like some of you watching today, you feel stuck in your here. You feel stuck in the moment right here. Like, I know I've got these prophecies. God has said this. God has said that. How do I get from them? I'm going to tell you how you get from them. You begin to speak those things that are not as though they are. Don't give up in your here. Let God take you to your there. Oh, my God. <laughs> Man, I just love that. Don't die in your head. Yes. And you know, Dr. Miles, may, may I say one more thing Please, go to ahead. these dear people? Because yes. I, I, just thought about, I just thought about this right here. And I, I just want to release this. Guys, I write about this in chapter 3. Heaven keeps great records. Mm. And many times we give and we give and we give, we sow, we tithe, we do these things. And the enemy comes in and says, you're a fool for doing that. You're never going to reap your reward. But I want you to know heaven keeps great records. And heaven has kept a record of every seed you have sown. The Bible says that heaven doesn't even lose a tear that God puts them in a bottle. When, you, when they fall off your face, God has them in a bottle right there. And I want you to know heaven keeps great records. And when, when you are believing for your there 
and you're not dying in your here. You refuse to die in your here, but you're believing for your there. I want you, every time you hit your knees, every time you call on God, I want you to put a draw on heaven's account because you have been sowing, you've been believing, you've been praying, you've been fasting, and heaven keeps great records. <laughs> listen to me, saints, listen. I am keeping up with your comments. Tell me, what did you, come on, come on, come on, so far. Tell me what you are, what your reaction to the word of the prophet <laughs> is right now. Come on, YouTube, don't let me hanging over there. My God, Solomon, talk to me, somebody. Oh, my God. This is foul. Solomon, he says, yes, I got I to gotta hear God. For, you know, yeah, mama, 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 mama. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, somebody Jenny from Las Vegas. She, she said, fabulous. Come on. Jeju W. Barrett. I refuse to bow to the now circumstances in the name of Jesus. Saints, I'm telling you, I know you're going to love this word. I know you're going to love this word. Come on now. Facebook. Amen. Don't let YouTube beat you up. Beat you up. You need to show that Facebook is, is cutting the day as well. Amen. Praise God. I'm looking at your comments. Tell me what you're getting out of what the man of God is saying. My God. Rick Lanier, awesome word. Sherry Long, praise God. Hallelujah. Venon Batet, uh, amen, apostle. What a word. Amen. This is great stuff. Saints, again, you can go to Jeremiah Horsford. H O S F O R D. Jeremiah Horsford.com and get to be among the first 100 people to get prospering in pandemonium. And if you get the combo, if you get, if you get, if you do it today, you can even get the combo of both books, 21 days to the overflow uh, from the prophet of God and they both will be autographed for you. Now, man of God, chapter four, uh, I'm having the scriptures that, 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 that your chapters yeah, yeah. begin with. Uh, the return and the reward. Yes. I, the return and the reward. And any of us, the scripture to go with it. Mm -hmm. Ze Zechariah 9 verse 12. Return to the stronghold. You prisoners of hope. My God. <laughs> Listen, I don't want to be a prisoner of my circumstances. I want to be a prisoner of hope. That's right. Prisoners of hope. Even today, I declare that I will restore double to you. Yes. Please talk to us about chapter four, the return and the reward. Amen. You know, when, when the Lord was revealing this to me, um, I love what Dr. Miles just said, prisoner of hope. I don't want to be a prisoner of my circumstance. I want to be a prisoner of my hope. That means you're chained to hope. That means you're tied to hope. That means you're shackled to hope. And I don't know about you, but that's what I want to be shackled to. But when the Lord began to speak to me about this, he said the church as a whole, the church as a whole has begun to walk away from, from the things that I have placed in it that caused them to prosper, that caused them to, re, to, uh, to really uh, increase, to multiply, to have that, uh, the, the seed of Abraham covenant manifesting in their life. He said, they've walked away from it. And I begin to seek God. And he said, he said, I want you, there's, there's several things the church must return to. And when they return, tell them there is a reward for their return. There is a reward for their return. And he and I immediately began to think about the prodigal son. Think about the prodigal son. The whole time he was away, the enemy was beating him up. The enemy was telling him, you can't go back home. Finally, he says, I, well, I'll tell you what, I'll go back home and be a, a, a servant. But what happens when he goes back home? The father rewards him for returning. And, and I talk about several things the church needs to return to. And, and, and one of them is uh, the, the return of worship, the return to prayer, the return to intercession, the return to praise, the return to sacrificial giving, the return to honor, the return to reverencing the Lord. Just many things the church needs to return to. I talk about that in, in chapter four because there is a reward to your return. And, you know, and many people, uh, many people have not returned back to being um, a productive partner of a church you, you, because of COVID and many other situations. And right now you're reaping uh, things that God, don't, God does not want in your life. God doesn't want those things in your life. And this is what, this is the clarion call that is happening in the kingdom right now. He is saying, return you prisoners of hope, return 
and I will reward. I will release the double portion back unto you. And that was the whole mindset behind the return and the reward. That was what God spoke to me. Tell, call the church back. Call them to return and I will reward. I will release the double portion back unto them. Wow. <laughs> there is a reward for the return. Yes. What a God we serve. He Come doesn't on. hold it against us. He forgives us, you know, for walking away. But when we return, we get paid. Come on now. Saints, you need to get this book, Prospering in Pandemonium. Because I'm telling you, even though Elijah, the prophet, is the one who called for the famine for three years in Israel, do you notice he never liked food himself? <laughs> Amen. Because God gave him a pathway for how to prosper in the pandemonium are uh, in the fame mine. So I'm telling you, saints, this is a book with the, this is a prophetic roadmap. Prospering in pandemonium. I'm so excited. I'm sure you keep seeing the lower the lower third coming up, you know, order now. You know, it's showing you where to go. You know, go and get it. I just saw Cheryl say in, on Facebook I was saying, Dr. Miles, I want you to know I'm getting both books. Come on, Cheryl. Let's do it. Yes. You know, Cheryl is gonna be among that 100, the first 100 to get an autographed copy of the apostle. Praise God. So you do you don't want to miss that autographed copy of this powerful revelation. Amen. Praise God. Now, for the people that are like that are, are, are that are in nations that are very far countries, Apostle, is your book available also on Amazon? Yes, it's available on Amazon. It's available on Barnes and Noble. Okay. It's also available on the audible the audible version of iTunes and the platform Audible. So, for the people that like to listen, yes, they can just available. get it on Audible.com. Yes. It's so, so it's available on Audible on Amazon. Uh, come on, prospering in pandemonium. But it's only when you go to his website, jeremiahhorsford.com, that you get the autographed yes. copy of um, the author. Because obviously, if you buy from Amazon, it, Amazon will ship it directly right. to you. You'll never even know it. But at least you get the book, you know. But if you need an autograph, then you go to jeremiahhorsford.com. Man of God, your next chapter, chapter number five, really gets into... The dangers of how the dangers of walking in the flesh. Yes. You know, I, I believe the flesh or listening to our flesh, I think is the main reason why I think many Christians, even some of them died in the pandemic in yes. the pandemic. Yes. Because they, they let the flesh guide them, they let the fears of the flesh guide them through the pandemonium instead of letting the, the, the Holy Ghost right. guide them through it. So you talk about the enemy within. Yes. That's chapter five to give us a synopsis of what that means, the enemy within. Yes. Uh, you know, I don't know about you guys, but what I have found is my greatest enemy is not the devil. My greatest enemy is not the person who hates me, not the person who talks about me. My greatest enemy is not even uh, a political, who, who's, who's in politics or who's running the nation. My greatest enemy is within me. One man said it like this. It is the enemy in a me. <laughs> and so that is, that's my greatest enemy. Because I want to tell you a little bit about the challenge that, that I was having when uh, God spoke this word to me. I, it, it, there, was a, there was a battle going on between my flesh and, and the spirit. And this is what it was over. That is a great word. I can preach that word. People are going to receive that word and it's going to happen for them, but I don't think it's going to happen for me. See, that is the challenge that every person has to face every time God releases a word. And you want to know where the challenge is? It's with our flesh because the flesh wars against the spirit. The flesh is constantly at battle with the spirit. And so therefore, when God releases a word to you, the flesh shows up immediately to tell you why you can't have it, to tell you why you're not a part of it, to tell you why it's going to happen for your neighbor and it's going to happen for your people in your Bible study, but it's not going to happen for you. But I'm, I've come to announce something that you already know. The devil is a liar and the flesh 
is a liar as well. Because I'm telling you right now, if you can begin to get full of the spirit and once you crucify your flesh, all of a sudden this word begins to hit in you and you begin to say things like this. God, if you did it for them, you can do it for me. And God, when you did it for them, I know you will do it for me. When that begins to hit you, all of a sudden you realize that God does have a plan for you. God does want to prosper you. God does want to show you and release the increase upon your life. God does want to protect your kids. God does want to heal your body. God really does want to make your marriage fruitful. God really does have a plan of success for your business, for your area of concern. And so that is what the enemy within is what the Lord was showing me. If you're going to walk in the double portion anointing, if you're going to walk in this end times anointing, then what you have to do first is go ahead and crucify the flesh and tell the flesh to hush its mouth and you begin to listen to the spirit because the flesh will tell you every reason why it will not happen for you. But God is telling you every reason why it, why it will happen for you. And so that is part of who are you going to listen to? Is it going to be the flesh or is it going to be the spirit? Because when you begin to get this, now there's a reason why this chapter is in the middle of this book. Because right after this chapter, once you begin to read this book or if you get it on Audible and you begin to listen to it, right after this chapter is when you really begin to sense the impartation that God releases in you. And the reason that has to happen is because the flesh has to get out of the way so that the impartation of the spirit will begin to be deposited inside of you so that you can believe and receive the double portion. And so, Dr. Miles, that is why I, I wrote that chapter, The Enemy Within, because so ah, many people, Jesus, so many people battle the enemy inside of them. It's My the God. voice every day yes. that says, you're not going to make it. You're not going to be the one. I tell you, saints, I don't know about you, but I'm loving this revelation. Saints, and I'm saying from your comments on YouTube and Facebook, that you are loving too. But do not forget to keep sharing this. Yes, yes. Because we want this to reach thousands of people because who would have thought there would ever come a day in America when we would be going all over the country, mothers looking for baby formula. Mm. Baby being, babies being hospitalized because there is a shortage of baby formula. And now some of the empty shelves. My goodness. Saints, listen, this is the greatest country on earth experiencing that. Now projected. If America is experiencing that, what's happening in other parts My of the world? My goodness. What, what about the believers? What's God's plan for the believers, his children in that country? Mm -hmm. is, God, is God holding his arm saying, my God, it's up to the U.S. government? No, God loves his children. He always has a plan. He always has a plan for his children. Yes. So guys, we need to, to get uh, prophetic blueprints that the, enemy, that the Lord is sending to allow us to prosper in spite of what's going, uh, going on around us. And I'm telling you, I'm an author of powerful books yes. that have gone yeah. around the world. But this book is a game changer. Prospering in Pandemonium. Get it right now. Uh, the name of us, JeremiahHosford.com. It's very easy. It's a pastor's name. With the way that with that come at the end of it. And you can find it and get the book or get the combo by the Spirit of God. Man of God, uh, you said chapter six, the pop, the purpose of position. Yes. Location, location, location. <laughs> man, I'm like, man, what is this? Okay, talk uh, to us. And how is that connected to prospering in Panama? Yes. You know, guys, what I have found is that many times. Uh, we, we don't understand that God wants to position us to prosper. He wants to position us to increase. He wants to position us to walk and, and live the abundant life. And I talk in the book, I talk about several different uh, things that help position us. Uh, but I also talk about, you know, have you ever thought about it, that, that one of the things that could be holding you back or one of the things that might be standing against you is that you're not in the right location. 
And you're thinking, what does that, what does that matter? God is God over the universe. Why, why do I have to be in a right location? And I want to I want to just give this real quick to you. If I told you to be at a certain restaurant at a certain time, at a certain location, and I was going to pay off all of your debt if you're there at that time and you show up to that restaurant at that time, but it's in a different state, would you receive the blessing? No, you would not. Many times people make decisions, job decisions, church decisions, uh, things like that, and they never consult. God, do you want me to move there? God, do you want me to be there? Have you ever thought about that your anointing, your call, and what God has for your life is assigned to a location? Because it is. I'm telling you, it is. Now think about this. In the spirit, if in the spirit, if, if you're not somebody who is positioned properly through your giving, through your sowing, through forgiving other people, through your life that you're living of, of obedience, if it's not positioned properly, then God is always releasing from heaven. But it isn't that he's not releasing to you. You're not positioned properly to receive it. The purpose of position. God has a position for you. God has a place for you. And when you step into that place, when you step into that position, when you are lined up with heaven, I'm telling you, there is nothing that anybody can do to stop what God is releasing on your life. And I just want to give you one quick example that I write about in the chapter. Jacob. Jacob, when when Jacob uh, was when he was at his father in law's house, God did not release the revelation to him about the the ladder from heaven. When he was at his father's house, he did not release the revelation about the ladder from heaven. But when Jacob got to a certain location, he laid his head down on a rock. And that night, God gave him the revelation and he saw angels ascending and descending. And he woke up and said, this place is the house of God. He was in the right location to receive the revelation. And so there is, there is an, uh, uh, a revelation behind you being in the right place, being the right person at the right time. And sometimes it requires you moving a geographical location and, and sometimes it just, re it just requires you to adjust your spiritual posture or your heart posture towards the Lord to receive what God has for you. Wow. Listen, saints, this is so powerful. I feel the anointing. Remember, at the end of the broadcast, we're coming close to the end of the broadcast for this particular book. I'm telling you, he's going to pray a word. He's yes. going to pray over you. And he lists the word of the Lord concerning how you can live through this pandemonium. I'm telling you. Now watch this. I see Janine on, on YouTube. You're saying, Lord, put me in the right location. I, I, I mean, that's a very good prayer to pray. And I think everybody should be praying yes. what Janine is praying. Praise God. Hallelujah. Patricia Og Tree said, this is a Rema word. I'm telling you, it's a phrase from heaven. And then New Philly Girl, you're saying, welcome. I'm watching from Delaware, USA. You know, my God, this is very powerful. You know, shaking kingdom ministries. Amen. The right location is very important. Since I'm looking at your comments, I'm so blessed that you are very fully engaged, both on YouTube and Facebook. You know, um, it's just amazing to be able to see the level of engagement we are getting a pastor. I just, I love to keep up with my people yes. as they're engaging because it's so powerful to see them just stay with us. So chapter number seven, man of God, uh, apostle. You say this. The I love that you play on words in terms of the, this <laughs> chapter. And, and I'm going to let you explain okay. what you mean by that. It's the sound of the time, the time of sound. And this is the, the, the scripture you, you use for that. Zechariah 9 verse 14. Then the Lord will be seen over them. And his arrows will go forth like lightning. The Lord God will blow the trumpet and go with whirlwinds from the south. Yes. Talk to us about this title, the sound of the time, uh, the, uh, and, and then comma, the time of sound. 
Yes. Please talk to us. I love that. Yes. But I want to hear where you're coming from. Yeah, you know, one of the things about this chapter, it was one of my favorite chapters to write here. But the, the challenge here is we don't even have enough time to unpack Yes. This thing right here. <laughs> that's why you, but I'm going to do my that's very That's why they need the book, man. <laughs> you need the book. Yes. But I'm going to do my very best. The Bible says that the sons of Issachar, yes. they knew the times and they also knew what Israel should do in the times. Zechariah 9 says God will blow the trumpet. In other words, you, in other words your key or your, your path to prospering in pandemonium is being able to hear what heaven is releasing. Can you hear what the trumpet or the sound of the trumpet and what is that sound and what is it saying? Because that's very important. It's one thing to hear a word from God. It's another thing to know the timing of the word. Okay, that's the sound of the time and the time of the sound. Wow. Now, think about this. The, the challenge that many of us have right now is if you're not careful, you'll look at situations, you'll look at circumstances, and you'll say this. Why was I born right now? Why could have I not been born 50 years ago? Why could I have not lived then? Why could I have not lived now? Why do I have to live in a time where a pandemic is going throughout the earth? Uh, shortages are happening everywhere. War is going on. People don't know what they uh, believe anymore. And why do I have to live right now? Was this a mistake? Let me tell you something. It is not a mistake. You were born for now. Think about that. You were born for this very time. God saw something inside of you that, that caused him to say, what's in you is going to help for this time right now. What is in you is built for this moment. And you might say, well, that's good, but it doesn't change what I'm, what I'm facing right now. Let me tell you what will. When you take what's in you and you listen to what heaven is saying and you discern the time of what heaven is saying, then those two right there bring breakthrough in your life. And I want to give you one example right here. The Bible says in the Old Testament that uh, the Lord told Moses, he said, when, when it's, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a trumpet and you are to blow the trumpet and make this sound when it's time to do this. And you're to blow the trumpet in uh, this way when it's time to do that. In other words, when it's time to move the camp, there is a certain sound that you need to release. When it's time for a holy assembly, there's a certain sound that you need to release from the trumpet. And when there's time for battle, there's a certain time that you or there's a certain sound you need to release from the trumpet. Now, think about this. What if what if they got the sound of the holy assembly or that sound of of war mixed up with the holy assembly? That means that people would hear the sound that, that Moses released from the trumpet and they would show up to have church when they should have showed up for battle. They, they couldn't discern the time or the sound of the time. Think about it. Now, now let's pull that revelation into where we're at right now. What if God is saying it's time for you to prosper but you hear another sound that says it's time for you to live in poverty. What if right now you're, God is saying it's time for my people to be the head and not the tail. But you hear another sound that says it's time for you to be the tail and not the head. You see, there is a, there's a time of the sound and a sound of the time. And the sound of the time right now is this. Church, you're in your finest hour. Church, you're in your greatest hour. Come People on. of God, it's time for you to rise up. It's not time for you to lie down and die. You're in your greatest hour. That is the sound that is being released from heaven. And that is not only the sound, but it is the time of the sound. Wow. I tell you, I love you. Well, it's also time for you to write down the website, Jeremiah. Hosford.com because you need to engage this prophetic sound that we are bringing. This is a spe special prophetic broadcast. Yes. It was not, I mean, I just felt led. I was in Texas preaching. And by the way, thank you for everybody that supported our meetings in Texas. You know, and uh, then I felt led by the Holy Ghost 
to, to, to connect with the man of God and say, can we come and do a broadcast on your book? Because I think your book is so important as a prophetic roadmap for the body of Christ around the world, not become victims of the pandemics and the pandemoniums of the last days, but to thrive through all the confusion, all through the darkness. Okay, that is our, our covenant promise. You know, and so I, he said, yes, he just happened to be in town and we are doing it. Both of us are actually flying out. He's <laughs> flying somewhere today. I'm flying to the Ivory Coast. You know, I mean, come on now. But we felt this was so important. We had to have an unusual, uh, special prophetic broadcast. So you are blessed to be listening to this. And if you happen to be listening to this when it's no longer live, remember the anointing is always live. The glory of God is always live. Okay, so the same anointing is hitting you now, yes. but, the shop, but, but the window is still open for you yes. to get the, the book uh, prospering in pandemonium by my dear friend. Chapter 8, more than conquerors. I love this one, but here's the scripture you use. Uh, Zechariah 9.13, for I have, I have bent Judah my bow and fitted the bow with Ephraim and raised up your, your sons, O Zion, against your, all your sons, O Greece, and made you like the sword of a mighty man. So talk to us about this chapter on more than conquerors and how that's connected to the message of prospering in pandemonium. Yes, uh, and again, I know you might, you probably think, man, you're saying about that about every chapter, but this was one of my favorite chapters as well to write because the Lord spoke to me one day when I was preparing a message and he said, Son, you are more than a conqueror. And I said, yes, Lord, I, I know the scripture. Thank you. And I kept on going. And then he said it again. And uh, I said, yes, I, I, thank you, God. And then I realized he was trying to say something to me, reveal something to me that I didn't know. And he said, son, you need to understand what I mean by when you are more than a conqueror. He said, see, a conqueror shows up to the battlefield to get the victory. He said that so you, they show up to make sure they win. He said, but I called you more than a conqueror. That means you don't just show up to the battle to win. You show up and win the battle and gather the spoil from the battle. You see, that's what the Lord is, is doing right now. Every time I find in the Bible, every time that his people were obeying him, lined up with him and doing what was pleasing to him. When an enemy showed up to their front door, the enemy showed up not to take from them. The enemy showed up not to defeat them. The enemy actually showed up to deliver their increase, to bring their increase to them. Can I tell you why COVID showed up? COVID showed up to bring your increase. Can I tell you why pandemonium has showed up? It has showed up to bring your increase. You see, you have, to, you have to realize that that is where you're fighting from. You're fighting from a place of victory. You're not fighting for victory. You're fighting from it. And if you'll study in the word and get and read this book, you'll realize that every single time, every single time they showed up to, to, to defeat the people of God, all they did was bring spoil. I think about just one story. I think about the story of Ziklag. He, David and his men are out fighting. Their children and their wives are at home. Uh, and, and here comes the enemy and they raid their, their, their city. They take their wives. They take their children. They take everything from them. David says, bring me the ephod. He begins to seek the Lord. And he says, shall I go and uh, pursue them? God says, go and pursue them and you shall recover all. Now think about that. Because all does not mean just what they took from you. All means everything they have. David and his men go and attack, uh, attack the enemy. And, and the Bible says they don't just recover all. They recovered everything they had taken from everybody else. In other words, God allowed the enemy to attack Ziklag so that David could increase and not decrease. Now, I want you to think about that because you might be saying, yeah, but you don't understand. You don't understand who I am. I'm not the one everybody chooses. I write about this in the chapter. I call it the sovereign switch, mm. the sovereign switch. And it's when Joseph brings his boys to Jacob to be blessed. 
And, and in, in, the, in that culture, the right hand was the stronger blessing. And so he lines his older son up with Jacob's right hand and his younger son up with Jacob's left hand. And Jacob's blind. He does. He's done got so uh, uh, old that he's blind. He can't see. And when he reaches out his hands, he switches his hands. And Joseph goes to turn his hands back. And, and Jacob says, no, 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 you don't understand. Yes, the, the older one will be blessed. But listen here, I'm bringing you back to the scripture. Ephraim is going to carry the blessing. And he got the right hand blessing. Ephraim was the one that everybody thought shouldn't get it. He was the younger son. What does that mean for me right now in 2022? What it means for you is it does not matter if everyone's overlooked you. It does not matter if everyone has uh, counted you out. It does not matter if you've always been the last one to be chosen. Can I tell you, it doesn't matter if you're the last one in man's eyes. You're the first one in God's eyes. And there is a sovereign switch happening in the earth right now. And God is looking for people to walk in this double portion. Wow. My God. There is a divine switching <laughs> right now. Okay. Do you want, did you hear that? Yes. Sif things have shifted right now. God has you chosen for a breakthrough, an encounter yes. by the Spirit of God. At the end of the teaching, he flows in miracles. Yes. Since you go to Abundant Life Church, you are in for a miracle. You are, miracle for, for, you are in for some high praise and worship. <laughs> Man, they, they, they go for it. Man, your church reminds me of an African church, brother. <laughs> I said, I, 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 I'm like, man, I think your church is full of a bunch of white Africans, you know. Because <laughs> you can stay in there, they worship, they make noise, they love Jesus, and then the miracles just rain. Amen. Amen. So at the end, I can have a man who flows in miracles, not pray, release miracles for those who are watching. Right, right. So I will be doing it. I've got three more chapters to go, saints. But I'm, I can see from your comments, one woman says, I'm thanking God for waking me up to listen to this. Wow. You see, Praise God is God. so good. Come on. You know, uh, uh, somebody said, you know, oh, uh, Marlene, Marlene said, thank you so much for sharing this with us. I need to listen to this every day for a week. Now, that's saturation. Amen. I think everybody should do what Marlene just said. Yes. Sometimes I don't think we don't I, don't, I don't, I believe one of the reasons why certain message, what God wants for us doesn't really get us the, it's full dosage. It's like when, when, when you go to a doctor and you just take one pill, you, you don't finish the course. Mm. I think Malin is, got, is on to something. I'll, you, this is one thing I want you to listen. We're going to keep it up on our Facebook page. We'll keep it up on YouTube. That means you can come back, like Malin says, for, just listen to it again and again because this is a prophetic roadmap of how you rise above what the devil is planning Amen. for the earth Amen. in the last days. Man of God, this is so powerful. People are saying they're going to buy your book. This, is, God. this is good stuff, man. Praise now, God. chapter number nine, the vicarious. The, I love the vicarious. I love that word vicarious. Yes. The vicarious savior, and you use the, the scripture for this chapter. It comes from one of my, my wife's favorite Bible translations. Praise God. The Passion oh, Translation. Really? TPT. Now, in Romans 8.10, now Christ lives in you, and, e and even, though, even though your body may be dead because of the effects of sin, his life-giving spirit imparts life to you because you are fully accepted by God. Yes. Please talk to us about <laughs> the connection to prospering in the pandemic, in the pandemonium and our vicarious savior. Well, I was sitting on a balcony in uh, Mexico and uh, I was, it was one morning I was just out there drinking some coffee, reading the Bible. And I came across that verse and the Holy Spirit stopped me and he said, son, do you realize that Jesus wants to live his life through you? And of course, I, I answered, yes, I realize it. But then I heard him say it again. And I realized he was saying something else. And the Holy Spirit began to reveal to me. Now, we use the word vicarious uh, in many times in our culture in a negative way. In other words, we use it to, we use it to uh, talk about the overbearing father that's at a baseball field. Or we use it to talk about the, the mom who was in beauty pageants when she was little, and now she makes her daughter go through these uh, beauty pageants so she can live her life vicariously through that child. 
But when the Holy Spirit spoke that to me, he was not using it in a negative form. He was using it in a positive form. He was saying, do you realize Christ wants to live his life every day through you? And I said, yes, I realize that. He said, do you understand that Jesus, when he was on the earth, he never had the opportunity to father your son. He never had the opportunity to pastor your church. He never had the opportunity to run your business, but he wants to do it every single day through your life right now. Think about that. Jesus wants to run your business today. And if he did that, how would he run it? Can I tell you this much? He would not accept anything less than the double portion. Any, he, when he walked the face of this earth, do you ever see him lacking? Do you ever see him sick? Do you ever see him being defeated by devils? No, because he walked in the double portion. And if you understand that every day Christ is going to live his life through you, then you will realize that the double portion is coming with him in your life. And you can live your life without lack. You can live your life in health you can live your life in, a, in victory on a daily basis because Christ is living his life through you. And that was the whole thing, Dr. Miles, behind that chapter, the vicarious Savior. My God, I, I just, I tell you what, this is an amazing sense. I'm feeling the anointing so strong in our studios right here in Atlanta, Georgia. Come on. I mean, we just love you, saints. Um, I am so blown away. Apostle, there's so much commentary. Praise God. I mean, people are very engaged with yes. your message. Praise God. They are staying with us. Love you it. Know, Thank uh, you so through much. Through it and making a lot of comments. Case, you know, make, you see, when you make these comments, you encourage us. It lets us know yes. there's somebody else at the other end of the line. You know, watching, appreciating the sacrifice. You know, wow, this is some amazing things that's happening since I'm looking at that. And by the way, if you're on Facebook... You know, you, and, you are, and you are being blessed by the ministry of Dr. Francis Miles and the guests I bring. Send me some stars. You know, Facebook has this called stars. Send me some stars, okay? Praise the Lord. Amen. This is great stuff. So Candace, I mean, is watching. Uh, Lillian saying, Heaven, heaven skips get records. You still remember that? <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. Amen. James Mark, I mean, it's amazing to see people are giving wine liners on some of the points Love it. you are giving. That's how I know they are fully engaged. Praise God. Chapter 10. The, now, this is, a, I've heard you talk about, this is your passion. Yes. The double portion dimension. Yes. The double portion dimension. My God, I just want to hear this because I know that it is more. So yes. talk to us about the double portion dimension because this is also in the subtitle of the book. Yes, and, and by the way, uh, I preached a whole series on uh, the double portion dimension and there's a QR code in the back of this book when you get it that can, that can help you access that whole series right there so that you can get even more preaching. But the double portion dimension is something that the Lord revealed to me. And uh, because, you know, I was thinking about, I, I, I know uh, there's an anointing on my life and I know there's a call on my life and I know the glory of God shows up, praise the Lord, when, when, I, when I minister. But he began to talk to me about walking in the double portion dimension. And he said, son, this is what my son did when he walked the earth. And, he, and, and I began to think about it. And he said, do you understand why Jesus would never settle for lack? Why, why would he never settle for lack? And he said it was because the dimension that he came from mm. had no lack. So when he came to the earth and when he saw lack, he wanted to fix it because he knew the dimension he came from didn't have it. So what did Jesus do? Jesus would would invite the dimension, the double portion dimension from heaven on the earth. And any time that dimension showed up, it caused the dimension of the earth, the lack that was in the earth to bow to the double portion dimension on his life. Let me just give you a couple examples. Jesus looks at five loaves and two fish and he sees a multitude and and everybody else sees lack. But Jesus doesn't accept it. Why? Because the dimension his, he's from doesn't know lack. So what does he do? He takes the bread and the fish. 
He lifts them up, he breaks it, and he blesses it. What does that do? That invites the double portion dimension on the earth. And guess what happens? The whole multitude is fed by five loaves and two fish. The dimension, the double portion dimension caused lack to bow to, what, to when, it, when it came in contact with it. We see another time. We see another time. Because the dimension Christ was from knew no death. It knew no sickness. So this is why when he showed up and they said, listen, my brother's been dead now. If you would have came, uh, if you would have came sooner, he would not have died. Jesus said this. What did he say? Mary, did I not say if you believe you would see what? The glory of God. The glory, the dimensional glory of heaven that produces the double portion. He walks to the tomb, says, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus gets up. And now and, and, and comes to life. He's resurrected from the dead. What happened? He invited the double portion dimension on the earth and it caused death to bow. It caused sickness to bow. And this is the dimension that God is wanting you to walk in right now. This is what he has for you in the end times. Wow. I'm telling you, I mean, Elijah, Elijah, Elijah cried to Elijah, I want the double portion. <laughs> and we know what the, that double portion did for Elijah. Yes. Elijah, it changed everything. I mean, he did double the miracles of Elijah. Yes. I'm telling you, it's amazing. You know, um, so I can't wait to see the double portion, a blessing of God. I mean, run you, chase you down. I mean, I'm, Come just, on. I'm so excited about that. Praise God. Well, listen, we're almost at the end yes. and closer to the prayer, to the, mirror, to the prayer from the apostle for you and your family. Number eight, chapter 11, man of God, is on the supernatural wealth transfer. Yes. Man, I believe this. Our ministry did well, did, had more revenue in COVID than pre-COVID. Yes, ours did too. You, you, yours did? Yes, I mean, yes. I, I couldn't, I mean, you, you'd think it would be the opposite. Yeah. It was not. Mm -mm. You know, and, uh, uh, and it's amazing how God does that. Yes. You know, and so you talk about the supernatural world transfer and you lose Proverbs 13, 22. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children, but the wealth of the sinner is stored up for the righteous. Please talk to us about this chapter in this powerful book. Yes. You know, guys, I'm not the only one that has prophesied this. I, matter of fact, I told my staff not too long ago, I'm hearing so many men of God, including Dr. Miles, prophesy of the wealth transfer the 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 wealth that has been stored up by the wicked is being transferred now into the hands of the righteous and we see this so many times throughout scripture we see it happen with the children of Israel before they left Egypt what happened the Bible says they went to the Egyptians homes and the Egyptians gave them their silver gave them their gold and the Bible says they left with the wealth of Egypt you see I want you to understand something right now Jesus is coming back for his bride He's coming back for his church. But I want you to, to realize this. If I was about to get married to my wife, if I was about to, if our, let's say our wedding was uh, a month from now, and I had all the resources that I wanted, I had all the money I wanted, I had everything at my beck and call. And I, it, do you think I would tell my wife to go out there and try to go to the Goodwill and find her a wedding dress? Absolutely not. If I had, I'd say there is no, there is no price limit. You go get what you want because I can't wait to marry you. Guess what's, a, what's coming soon? What's coming soon is the groom and the bride are going to meet. And all of heaven, all the resources of heaven are right now ready to be transferred into your hand. Why? Because Jesus is not coming back for a broke bride. He's not coming back for, for a bride that, that has been beat down. He's coming back for a glorious bride. And I'm telling you, if I would do that for my wife, guess what Jesus would do for his bride? 
I'm telling you the wealth transfer is happening right now. This is why you want to have yourself positioned properly. You don't want to believe the lies of the enemy, but you want to be strong in your faith right now and begin to react to what God is saying because the wealth transfer is happening right now as we speak. Wow. Listen, man of God, I'm looking at, uh, this is a man by the name of, uh, uh, I think it's, it's R.J. McKay. And uh, now I know the Holy Spirit has been speaking to me. Praise a double God. double portion dimension. Uh, wow. You know, this is powerful. And then Solomon uh, says that the double portion dimension is where my dwelling should be. Yes. Oh, that is powerful stuff. I'm telling people are following this. Praise God. Ma Ma Mateo says, thank you so much for this anointed message. Guys, thank you. Keep sending, keep sending, keep sending your comments. We are reading them. We are so blessed by them. And uh, the man of God is going to, I think this is the last chapter in yes. the book. Uh, the beginning of his end. This is chapter 12 in the book. Uh, prospering uh, in pandemonium. Releasing and restoring the double portion. Uh, Second Cor 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 Corinthians chapter 8 verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That though he was rich, yet for your sex, he became poor. I love that one. <laughs> that you through his poverty might become rich. Man of God, talk to us about the last chapter in this powerful book that you need to get. And by the way, if you get both books, you know, you get this for $10 today. So $20 instead by itself, but now you get it for 50% 50, 50, 50 off. That's a good deal. And you get the both books, but they are autographed by the author, yeah. Apostle uh, Jeremiah Horsford. So man of God, the last chapter, you know, please talk to us about why you named it such. Yeah. You know, guys, many times, uh, if, if you've ever just looked back on some of the tough times that you've been through, some of the battles that you've been through, what you'll realize is that when the enemy thought he had won is when God actually shows up and gives you the victory. If you'll look back on every single time, it was right at the moment where you thought, my goodness, it's done with. And God brought a miracle in your life. You want to know why? Because it was the end of what Satan was trying to do in your life. And it was the beginning of what God was doing in your life. And let me tell you what's happening right now. Satan thought he, Satan thought he had this earth. He said, man, I'm about to lock this whole place down. I'm about to lock the churches down. I'm about to lock the gospel down. He thought it was all, all in his hands, but little did he know that everything he was doing was playing right into the plan of God. Why? Because it's the beginning of Satan's end. And I also want to declare something else over your life. It's the beginning to the end of poverty for you. Right. It's the beginning to the end of sickness. It's the beginning to the end of depression. It's the beginning to the end of you being stuck in a place called neutral. It's the beginning of the end of your divorce. It's the beginning uh -huh. of the end of the enemy having, uh, d trying to wreck the lives of your children. It's the beginning to the end of your ministry not growing. It's the beginning to the end of your business not being able to make it. Why? Because you have come in contact with a prophetic word from heaven. And just like we told you at the beginning, that prophetic word right now is changing your circumstance. It's changing your situation. It's changing your reality. And think about this. The enemy thought he had won. They, man, he, Jesus was on a cross. He had given up his spirit. He had died on that cross and been placed in a tomb. And hell was throwing a party and was ready to celebrate. But little did they know that what they thought, what the plan hell had, thought was going to defeat Jesus was actually the plan God had to bring Jesus down into the halls of hell and get the keys of death, hell, and the grave. So it was when, when, the, when Satan thought he had won, it was actually the beginning to his end. And that is what I decided to end this book with right here. I write about what it means to be the beginning of his end over your life. Wow. <laughs> man, I'm just, man, I'm loving this. Man, God, my God, my God, my God. Listen, this is amazing. Now, the, 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 I saw that in your book, 
uh, you got a couple of testimonies. Oh, yes. People yes. have received uh, miracles from miracles this Miracles after miracles Can you after give miracles. us maybe one or two of those testimonies? Uh, oh, any, I, would, any. I, I would love to. Yes, and um, then, you, then we're going to move into praying for Yes, people. there's this. There's a woman that started coming to our church right in somewhere along the time of the beginning of 2020. And she had been to several churches, but she, she knew there was more for her. She was seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost. She was seeking more from God. She shows up to our church, and it's her and her daughter, and I think uh, her younger daughter. I think that was all that showed up. Anyway, God touches her that, that day in a powerful way. The next week, she's baptized, and the Holy Ghost begins to speak in other tongues. And she begins to believe for her family to be born again, for her husband, for her son, and for her daughter to be healed. She begins to believe for a family restoration. Well, I begin to preach on prospering in pandemonium. And I begin to tell people, you know, one of the things about being properly positioned is being a sower. The Bible says that God gives seed to the what? the sower. And so I began to preach about that. And this woman caught faith and she said, I'm wanting my family to be restored. I'm wanting my husband to be saved. I'm wanting my son to be saved. I'm wanting my daughter to be healed. And she walks down to our altar with nothing more than a $50 seed. It's what she had, but she had faith connected to it. And she believed the message of prospering in pandemonium. And it was only a few weeks later. I can remember it like it was yesterday. Her husband walks into the church with her. He walks down and gets born again. And then it wasn't long after that. We was having some revival meetings in a tent awakening. Dr. Miles came one night. And uh, the Lord gave me a word of knowledge. Uh, and I said, there's somebody here with a rare blood disorder. I couldn't explain it because I didn't know the medical terminology for it. I just said, you have a blood disorder. You've been struggling for a long time. And you're, you came with faith to be healed tonight. If you'll stand up and come down, God's going to heal you. Well, it was her daughter. She came down. God touched her that night, healed her. And she's never, ever suffered from it again. But now that's not all. It was a, just a few months later, her son walks in the church, walks down, gives his life to the Lord, is baptized in the Holy Ghost. And God took, God took the word of prospering in pandemonium and put that lady's faith with it to sow a seed. And she watched as her family was restored over just a few months. That's wow. just one of the testimonies in this book right here. There are many other testimonies of people who are ready to shut their business down ready to close their business, and God miraculously brought increase because they began to believe. The Bible says, believe on the Lord and you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. My Lord, my Lord, saints, listen. Now, uh, wow, 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 wow. Saints, you know Dr. Myers, if you've been following me for quite a while, and many of you have, when I recommend something, especially in the realm of books, uh, it means a lot. Yes. Get the book, get it autographed, you know, but if you can't get it from his website because you are whatever, you are, you are in parts of the world where Amazon is, is a better way of getting the book to you or maybe going to audible.com and get, getting the audible, audio voice, I mean audio book so you can listen to, to the book. Either way, get the revelation because the more you soak in it, the more this comes into you because remember, this is not... A book. It's the mantle for prosperity yes. in pandemonium in on pages. Yes. So when you get this book, you might as well put a mantle on you in the spirit Amen. because that's what you're getting Praise right now God. by the spirit of God. You know what happens to mantles? When Elijah was an ordinary guy, Elijah also Elijah was an ordinary guy. But when that mantle of Elijah fell and sent, he picked it up. It was over. Yeah. You know, this is a mantle on pages. Oh, come on. Okay? For prospering in times of pandemonium, and you need it right now in Jesus' name. Man of God, can you just pray for those yes. who are sick, those who need to prosper, yes. those who are going through, I mean, sight, you know, who are going through setbacks, you know, you know, little miracles for, I mean, just pray as God leads you, just prophesy, just speak the word, look into the camera, pray for these people, because they're asking for prayer now all over YouTube and Facebook. Just pray, man of God, as God leads you before we conclude our broadcast. Yes, and, and I, I want to share something, uh, Dr. Miles, because when you called me uh, the other day uh, and told me about this, 
um, it wasn't long after that that I heard this in my spirit and that there's somebody watching today that that with a logistic company. I, I don't know. Mm. I know that's very vast, mm. but I heard it in my spirit. It's, 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 it's a, log, a logistical company. And God is about to impart this message through this book to you. And your company is going to explode in the next seven days. I'm, I'm just telling you what I sensed in my spirit. I don't know who you are. I don't know his viewership. But I'm telling you what I sensed in my spirit. It's going to explode like overnight. You're going to be absolutely blown away. Secondly, and before I pray, uh, while we was talking, I, there's somebody with a tumor on your left knee. Your <laughs> left <laughs> knee has <laughs> been bothering you for a long time. <laughs> it, it, I, I've been holding this this whole time. Halfway through the broadcast, I felt this in my spirit. A tumor on your left knee. And it is disappearing right now as I speak to you in the name of Jesus. You need to just put your hand on it, rebuke it, and watch. It's right now, it's disappearing. And we decree and we declare right now that over every person watching and every person that's going to watch later, your best days are ahead of you in the name of Jesus. Everything that you begin to put your hands to from this point forward is going to prosper. We rebuke cancer in the name of Jesus. Yes. I, rebuke, uh, I rebuke sickness in the name of Jesus. I command demons to come out in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare right now miracles breaking out in the name of Jesus right now. I rebuke skin cancer in the name of Jesus. There's somebody with a spot on the back of your neck. I just seen it in the spirit on the back of your neck. And, and I don't know if they've said it's cancer or you're wondering if it's cancer, but in the name of Jesus is disappearing from your neck right now. I decree it and I declare it in the powerful name of Jesus right now. And I call prodigals home right now. I call prodigals home. I thank you God for that yes. parent that is watching right now. And their son is named Adam. Adam is coming home in the name of Jesus. Adam is coming home. We release it by the spirit right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you God. Now right now we, we release the double portion over every business that is watching. I release the double portion over every family. I release the double portion over every ministry and I decree and declare that heaven has kept great records and it is releasing upon your life a supernatural harvest in the real time right now in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you for that right now in the name of Jesus. And I hear one more thing. Rebuke, rebuke brain, swelling on the brain. So I, 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 I'm Love telling you, I don't know. It ain't somebody watching. It's somebody's family member right now. Whoever you are, you need to call that, call somebody in that hospital, get to that hospital, whatever. Just rebuke swelling on the brain right now. It's got to go down in the name of Jesus. We rebuke it right now and I release healing. The Bible says what I bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. What I loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. I bind that brain swelling and I loose healing in the name of Jesus right now. And I thank you for it God. Wow. Wow. Saints, listen. Wow, 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 wow. Miracles, 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 miracles. Now listen. You got a miracle. God touched you. If you got a miracle from the broadcast. Yes, please. You know, we want you to go to francismouse.com and we have a new technology that allows you, allows you for, to testify via your video camera on your phone. No more than three minutes, then it will cut you off. But if you, if you can keep your testimony to no more than three minutes, you can literally go to FrancisMiles.com and testify. It will open up and you say share by video. It will open up your phone, a uh, uh, picture. Uh, you open up the camera on your, video, on your phone and you'll be able to speak, to, to, I mean, do a selfie. And it would come back to us in seconds. I mean, it's really simple. But boy, it's powerful as we get to know that you are being touched by the power of God on out, out there as we're doing this broadcast. Amen. Now Amen. listen, I, uh, again, one more time, do not forget to get why we did the broadcast. I wanted to get you the message. But you trust me, everything you have heard today on the broadcast is only 20% of the 80% yes. you're going to get from reading the book, meditating on the book, and then when you come back to watch the broadcast again, you'll get more out of the broadcast because you've read the book. Amen. And you can connect all the dots, even deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. 
So please get the book by going to jeremiahorsford.com. Now, listen. If you are blessed by, you have been blessed by the ministry of Dr. Francis Mouse and the guests we bring, I, in the few seconds left before we, we go off air, I just want to say thank you to all those who are radical, radically giving into our ministry. I want to brag on our partners and our friends on YouTube and Facebook. We have some of the most amazing followers. You are helping us do great things around the world by your giving. If you have been blessed today and you want to sow a seed into Francis Mouse International, you can see right now under the, the lower thirds are, are showing up on the screen the different ways to give. It's called Ways to Give. Find what works for you and give a seed for the double portion. And I'm going to have a pastor just pray over those who are giving the seed yes. right now. Remember, everything, if, if you live in America, is tax deductible. But that's not really the reason why we give to God. We give because of the promises that are in the Bible for giving to the Lord. Yes. But I want to tell you something. When you give to Francis Mouse International, you're not just giving to our conferences, our crusades. You know, you're also giving to widows and orphans. That's a big part of our ministry. Last year, we gave, I mean, we did over $100,000 last year because of your giving. And we were able to give to orphans and widows in Africa. We were able to build an orphanage from ground up for 44 orphans, six widows, because of your giving. Uh, it's now standing and the orphans have moved in. Thank you to you. So when you give to this ministry, you touch so many touch points. Amen. You invest in the kingdom in a big way. But most importantly, when you give, get ready to receive. Amen. That, I mean, get ready to receive because we say, we, this is good ground and we serve a God of increase. Apostle, if you could just yes. you know, pray over the people who are giving as we close the broadcast. And again, thank you for just agreeing to this special prophetic Amen. broadcast. Thank you for having me. Father, right now, I pray and decree over every seed that is sown into this ministry, not twice as much, not a tenfold, but the double portion anointing coming on every seed, the double portion anointing which connects them to an endless supply of heaven being released in the name of Jesus. And I decree and declare right now over every person given multiplication, increase, harvest. I thank you that their best days are ahead of them and everything that they, had need, they have need of is being provided for right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Get, now listen, saints, this is going to stay up live. It's going to stay up on YouTube and Facebook. Share, 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 share. What a word and the anointing of this of this broadcast was will be shared as you share Amen. to others in Jesus' name. A man of God, thank you thank for you, coming doctor. to the broadcast. Thank I love you, my brother. I love you, my brother. And I'm excited. Again, thank you for hosting us for three yes. days of glory. Oh, I can't wait. It's going to be amazing. I'm telling you, I love it. <laughs> Amen. Well, guys, watch the, again, want to remind you about Three Days of Glory as we leave the broadcast. We love you, but just watch this announcement on our way out. We love you so much. Shalom, shalom. Glory of God. The expanse shows his handiwork. In them he has set a tent for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his room like a strong man rejoicing to run his course. So I can understand that when Mary is in that crowd, part of her is crying for them to choose Jesus over Barabbas. But she doesn't understand the mystery of redemption. That Jesus did not come to the world to die a normal death. Because a normal death does not do anything for you and I. Release honor in this house. Release the altar of Melchizedek and bring honor to your name, honor to your altar like never before. When the King of Glory comes in, you cannot help but sing about His goodness. He is our joy. He is our healing. He is our deliverance. Hallelujah. He's even the shout in my mouth today. Faith with glory, it's, it's already done. It is finished. He actually, or, you already actually did it, but in the future. And you walk to the future and you realize, oh, I already did it. You walk into, it is finished. 
Jesus said, for the joy set before me, he endured the cross. No matter what's happened, my God is faithful. No matter what I feel, my God is going to come through. No matter what they say, my God is going to show up. Don't live in mediocrity any longer. Don't be average. Let God's promises shine on your ways and direct your path towards the life of victory He has in store for you. This is what the Lord was saying. He said, when, you, when you're in, living in the fire of my presence, that fiery darts can't touch you. When you begin to get the keys back to your giftings and your talents, and you say, I'm about to take the keys back to my life. Everything that Jesus did when he came to this earth, and now he's ascended back to the Father, and he says, I've given you all authority, I've given you dominion, now begin to act like it. The heavens declare the glory of God. The expanse shows His handiwork. In them He has set a tent for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of His room.